Chapter 20 Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon Nebuchadnezzar was the greatest ruler of the age in which he lived. Ezekiel spoke of him as a king of kings and prophesied that God would allow him to complete the destruction of Jerusalem and that because the inhabitants of the renowned city of Tyre would say against Jerusalem, Aha! She is broken that was the gates of the people. She is turned unto me. I shall be replenished. Now she is laid waste. God would bring upon Tyrus, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the terrible of the nations, who would make this place in the midst of the seas a desolate city that should be built no more. The prophet further declared, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, caused his army to serve a great service against Tyrus. Yet he had no wages, nor his army. Therefore thus saith the Lord, I have given him the land of Egypt for his labor, wherewith he served against it, because they wrought for me. The capital of Nebuchadnezzar's world empire is spoken of by Isaiah as Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, the golden city, the lady of the kingdoms, that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, and by Jeremiah as the praise of the whole earth. Jeremiah also speaks of the broad walls of Babylon and her high gates, Isaiah of her gates of brass. Habakkuk describes the Babylonians as that bitter and hasty nation, terrible and dreadful. Their horses also are swifter than leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. Jeremiah writes in regard to the mighty men of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar was an instrument of God's judgments. Thus saith the Lord, I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground, by my great power and by my outstretched arm, and have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon, my servant. And the beasts of the field have I given him also to serve him. And it shall come to pass that the nation and kingdom, which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will I punish, saith the Lord, with the sword and with the famine and with the pestilence, until I have consumed them by his hand. Therefore hearken not ye to your prophets, nor to your diviners, nor to your dreamers, nor to your enchanters, nor to your sorcerers, which speak unto you, saying, Ye shall not serve the king of Babylon. For they prophesy a lie unto you, to remove you far from your land, and that I should drive you out, and ye should perish. But the nations that bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, and serve them, those will I let remain still in their own land, saith the Lord, and they shall till it and dwell therein. The vision of the great image in which Babylon was represented as the head of gold was given Nebuchadnezzar in order that he might have a clear understanding in regard to the end of all things earthly and also in regard to the setting up of God's everlasting kingdom. Although in the interpretation he was declared to be a king of kings, this was because the God of heaven had given him a kingdom, power and strength and glory. His kingdom was universal extending wheresoever the children of men dwell. Yet it was to be followed by three other universal kingdoms, after which the God of heaven would set up a kingdom, which should never be destroyed. In the providence of God, Nebuchadnezzar was given ample opportunity to ascribe to the Lord the glory for the splendor of his reign. And for a time after the vision of the great image, he acknowledged God as supreme. Falling back into idolatrous habits, He was again, by the miraculous deliverance of the three Hebrews from the fiery furnace, led to acknowledge that God's kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. But once more the king perverted the warnings God had given him, and turned aside from the path of humility to follow the imaginations of his naturally proud heart. Thinking that his kingdom should be more extensive and powerful than any that would follow, He made great additions to the city of Babylon and gave himself up to a life of pleasure and self-glorification. Of this time he himself says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace. Youth's Instructor, October 11, 1904